Hello everybody, my name is Larry Knox. I am the GMC Yukon Marketing Manager for the all new 2015 GMC Yukon. And we would like to welcome you guys today to the Hangout to discuss the new 2015 product. With me is my partner in crime, Mr. David Schiavone. He is the product manager supporting the Yukon. David, could you please tell the team what you do in your role with the 2015 Yukon? Sure. Um, I am responsible for the product content that we're putting in the vehicles. So those things, future ideas, features, things that you've been asking for, I get them into the vehicle. So I, I live in two worlds, actually. I spend half my time with marketing. I spend the other half with engineering. So I've got to take all these marketing ideas. We need these features, you know, whether it's um, new headlamps or we need more spaciousness. I take that back to engineering, work it out with them, and then I take whatever they whatever they can do or can't do, I bring back to marketing, and we get you the best product you can have. Great. Thank you. So today, we're going to be answering questions that you guys have been asking about the all-new 2015 Yukon. If you want to submit a question, just comment on the Google Plus event page, and we'll try to answer as many as we can during this Hangout session. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first question that we have is from Kelly W. And Kelly is asking, will, we have, will the new Yukon have a third row seat that is easier to remove? Uh, Kelly, that is a great question, and I got great news for you. We've totally redone the uh, third row seats. They are now fold flat, and we have a manual version and a power version. So you will not be removing them anymore from the vehicle. They will fold flat, flush down into the floor. And the really cool part about this is we've got on the, um, you know, when you lift up the lift gate, right on the inside, we've got controls that can take the rear seats down in roughly about three seconds. They'll be down and up in about three seconds. We also have another set of switches that actually will fold the second row down, which is really cool. So if you're at Home Depot or you're at the store and you need that whole length, you don't have to go around to the driver's side and then back to the passenger side, back to the rear. You can do it all from the rear of the vehicle when the lift gate's up. So we, re we really nailed that one, Larry. Yes, we did. We did a great job with that one. Uh, Rod M, he wants to know if a smaller mm -hmm. engine will be available with the Yukon XL Denali. Yeah. Hey, Ron, we've got two great engines that we're going to have on this Yukon lineup. We've got a 5.3 liter Ecotec 3, and then we've got a 6.2 liter Ecotec 3. The, the 5.3 is going to be in the SLE, SLT, and that the 6.2 liter is only going to be available in the Denali. And what's really great about this new powertrain, and it is new from the ground up, we've got three features that really are making this um, the most uh, the most powerful and the most fuel efficient in the segment. Uh, we've got active fuel management. That's the feature that actually shuts down the cylinders if you're going down the highway and you don't need all eight cylinders to get you down the road. It'll shut four of them off. So that's active fuel management. We also have direct injection and that's where you're putting fuel right into the cylinder. And then the last one is variable valve timing where you're actually changing the timing of the compression and combustion cycle. And what that does then is that gives us the best horsepower and torque in the segment and also it gives us the best fuel efficiency. We will be number one for fuel efficiency and number one for power in the segment. So great question. Thanks great. for asking. Great. Next we have JS and at Dr. Steve Thiel on Twitter and they want to know if GMC is considering a diesel option for the Yukons, as well as Richard Kay, who's also asked the question, will there be a hybrid version? So Dave, yeah. you could address any alternative propulsion type um, yeah. executions that we yeah. may potentially offer on this product. It, it is a good question. Jay, Steve, Richard, like I just said, we're, we're going to come out with the two main powertrains, the 5.3 liter Ecotec and then the 6.2 liter. So we're really not looking at a, a diesel or a hybrid at this point in time. Now, now having said that, we're always adapting to the market and what the market needs. But uh, when you see us launch this product, uh, we won't have hybrid or a diesel in it. Right. And one thing just to add on. Today, when you take a look at our VA powertrains, we have best in segment, best in class fuel economy. So we will be building upon that foundation with these new Ecotec 3 engines. Right. So next, uh, Cole W. He asked, when can we expect to see the latest fuel economy numbers, uh, David? Cole, that is a good question. We're getting a lot. Th that question is coming up a lot. And, and the, the short answer is we won't have the certified numbers until the end of the year. So we have to go through, obviously, a lot of testing, a lot of calibration work, and um, that'll take us through the end of the year. But like I was saying before, I can tell you, 
we will have best fuel efficiency and you can expect that we'll be somewhere around eight to ten percent more efficient than today's model so it's a nice improvement especially for all the horsepower and torque we're going to get uh, next at Ingo Dallas he asked on Twitter will the Denali feature automatic start stop functionality to help save gas uh, yeah that, that is a good question Ingo and I know there's uh, some pockets in the industry are starting to do that uh, we, we do not have that feature on our engines and a lot of it goes back to what Larry's saying we, we're gonna have the most fuel efficient vehicles and so we don't need we don't feel we need that right now but let me throw out one other thing because we, we've had a whole bunch of powertrain questions let me tell you what we're doing for power horsepower and torque if you if you understand your Yukons today we're at 320 horsepower we're going all the way up to 355 horsepower and torque today we're at 335 we're going all the way up to 383 so that is a great great powertrain and on the 6.2 liter we're actually going from 403 all the way up to 420 and our torque on that is going from 417 all the way to 460 so we've got two great really strong engines yes. and yet the fuel efficiency is even better on both models yep awesome engineering feat that we did there um, next Evan R he's asking will there be an 8 speed transmission David Evan that's a good question um, when we start out when we when we start production we'll have a 6 speed just like we do today um, 8 speeds are becoming more common and um, it, it would make sense if we're following the segment that uh, we'll get there sometime okay that, that's as that's as true as I can answer that question right uh, next we have Karen J uh, Karen wants to know mm -hmm. if the 2015 Yukons are on a full frame yeah Karen that is a good question and yes we are on a full frame so when, when you talk about off-road you talk about rugged you talk about trailering payload all that th these Yukons are going to deliver just like they do today and even more so because we've we've beefed up the structure with a lot of high strength steel our engines are stronger our brakes are better so yes we're on a full frame and we're going to be even more capable when we come out with this new product Great. okay now we have a towing capacity question Richard R and Judy W would just like to know what the towing capacity is for both the Yukon and the Yukon XL oh that is a good question um, the Yukon is going to be the same so we're going to be at 8500 um, on the rear wheel drive and 8300 then on the all-wheel drive on the Yukon um, the the Yukon XL is going to be at 8300 and drop to 81 Denali will stay roughly the same as well so when you talk about where we are today we're right at the same point or off by a hundred okay. or any, more than a hundred. Any unique towing packages? Or well on the certainly on the SLT we'll have what we're calling internally our NHT package and that'll give you the heavy-duty cooling on the transmission on the engine the up axle going right. to the 342 axle so we will have that and then all of that content is standard on the Denali. Great. So it'll it'll be able to handle any trailering need or payload need. Okay. Yeah. Next up, um, Bradley J. He's asking if the Yukon will have heads up display or what we affectionately also call as HUD. HUD. Yeah, that is a good question, Bradley. The answer is yes. We are going to make it available on the Denali. Won't be on the Yukon SLE SLT, but it'll be on the Denali. Okay. Um, Marl O asks, how soon will we know the interior and exterior colors that are available? Um, Marl, if you go to the GMC.com website, we have um, our whole color palette available in uh, 360 degree images at the top of the website. So when you go to the website, click on future vehicles, and there you can see the entire color palette, both from an interior and an exterior perspective. Yeah, I just want to jump on that. The, the website's great. It has a series of beautiful pictures on what the Yukon and the Denali what they look like interior exterior yes. and all the colors that we offer it's a great place you all, you all, you all ought to run to it and take a look Great. alright next up Evan R he wants to know about our rear cargo area and specifically about audio controls uh, that we have currently in the Acadia will that particular feature be also will that particular feature also be offered on Yukon yeah, Evan, the, the short answer is no. Sorry. It, obviously, that's what you were hoping for by the question. We won't have that. But I, but I can tell you, um, as with the question before, that, that whole rear cargo area is, is very different now. Now that we have the third uh, fold-flat third-row seat with power 
um, it, it's really a nice execution back there. We just won't have your audio buttons. Sorry. Okay, so uh, so interest around interior spaciousness, spaciousness. Excuse me. We have Harag A and Frank P, and they're both interested oh. in just understanding this interior spaciousness of the product. Better, worse, the same. Yeah. Any dimensions that you can share with us, Dave? Yeah. Well, let, let me let me do it this way. Um, when you talk about the whole exterior of the vehicle, let's just start on the outside. All of our dimensions from the current to where we're going in the future, they're all within an inch or less. So th this vehicle has the same proportions, same size, all of that is virtually the same. When you get to the interior, same thing. Um, almost every dimension, whether you want to talk about headroom, legroom, hip room, shoulder room, all of that is within an, an inch or so. But what we've also done, and, and especially for the uh, taller folks in the vehicle, we've added an extra inch of rear leg room for the driver and front passenger. And, and an inch might not sound like a lot, but in the seated position, it's actually quite a bit. So we're really, we're really happy with that. Um, there was also another question out there that uh, I just want to cover, too, because they were saying, hey, I saw something at uh, 45 inches of leg room. Is that true? And, and the answer is yes, it's true, because we, we've added this one inch. We're measuring it a little differently. We want to really tell everybody what the, the actual uh, leg room is instead of just some middle of the road value. Right. You know, so it's uh, the spaciousness, you won't be disappointed. Okay. Um, next up, another question from Cole W. He's asking, um, according to interior pictures, the Denali is going to have a two high auto, four high, and four low uh, capability. Is that the case? And if so, why did we decide to go away from all wheel drive, okay. Dave? Cole. Very good question. So you were obviously looking at the pictures. Um, we we did walk away from the all-wheel drive, and we went actually back to this um, this four-wheel drive system. Um, so you saw it correctly. We'll have a on the Denali. We'll have a two high, um, four high, four low. It'll have a neutral for dinghy towing. Um, in that system will also be available then on the NHT, the trailering package for the SLE, SLT that we were just talking about. The main reason why we did that is twofold. One, fuel economy. The all-wheel drive system inherently has some drag on the drive line. So the whole time you're driving, it, there's a drag on the system and the differentials in the center and the rear and the front. By going to this, uh, this real two-speed, we can, most people will drive in probably two wheel or the auto track mode and it improves their, um, improves fuel economy. But also from a performance standpoint, when you're off roading, the four wheel drive is a bit better than an all wheel drive system. And so uh, we, it was a win win for us fuel economy and some capability. Okay. Okay, next up, uh, a question from Luis S., I believe. He wants to know what options are available on the 2015 oh. Yukon XL Denali that the 2010 Yukon XL Denali does not have. Okay. Luis, this is a long list, so sit back, okay? <laughs> no, really it is. When you, when is. you look at all the features that we've just yeah. added to the new one, uh, we can go on and on. Yeah, when we say all new vehicles, we mean these vehicles are all new. Yeah, the, from the ground up, these are, these are brand new. So... Uh, Wheels. We've got beautiful new 18, 20, and 22-inch wheels available. That's there's a starter there. Uh, the other thing is we've added uh, a plethora of safety features. Uh, what you'll find is a safety alert system where we've added. Uh, it's called forward collision alert, and that's when you're driving down the road. If you get too close to the vehicle in front of you, you'll get uh, an audible or maybe a vibration alert. Uh, lane departure warning. If you're driving down the road and you're maybe not paying attention and you cross the line on the left or the line on the right, this system will actually, uh, again, give you an audio alert or a vibration alert. And when I say vibration alert, this is what's really cool. We've actually, it's a General Motors first, certainly a segment first for our Yukon. It's all called our safety alert seat. And what that is is we've got uh, there are little motors that are in the seat cushion for the driver. There's one on the left side, one on the right side. So when you're driving down the road, let's say you cross the, uh, the left line, you can get a vibration under your left thigh. So none of the passengers know it, you know it, mm -hmm. and it lets you, you know, quietly know that, oh, hey, maybe I need to come back in to my lane a little bit. Same with forward collision alert. You will, both of those uh, motors in the seat will vibrate, and you'll get a visual alert in the windshield. So that's our safety alert package, and that's, that's a real, that, that's a winner. Yes. To add to that, 
we've got a safety assistance package and that's where we bring in adaptive cruise control and that's the system where you can set a gap and you will always be behind the uh, the vehicle in front of you whatever determined gap you have and we have it at uh, far medium and, and close so depending if you uh, tailgate or not um, you, you can set that gap to whatever and it'll always keep you at that distance so that's a great feature and, and along with that is a feature called uh, crash imminent braking so that if um, you're too slow to the brake the brakes will automatically come on when it sees the vehicle in front of you is maybe stopping and you just weren't prepared for that so that is another great package that we have going on. Right. Um, um, when you jump into like our Denali model, for instance, um, some other features, we have a eight inch reconfigurable uh, driver display where um, customer can go in there, look into the cluster, and they can put whatever ever type of data that they want to see in a the vehicle there, whether it's uh, media data from what's on your iPod, incoming call data, vehicle specific data, and that customizable display interfaces with your radio in the center stack. So you can kind of go back and forth between those two units and uh, control the information uh, that you want to view. Um, other things that we have, and, and this is a great thing that we have, but we have a, a new um, enhanced security package. Uh, um, yeah. When you take a look at our entertainment, we've moved from DVD to now offering Blu-ray for your rear seat occupants. So there's a, a lot of technology and new features that we've added to these vehicles that have, uh, that have definitely helped us kind of leap ahead of where our competition is right now. Yeah, let, let me let me keep going on that because th those are some great points, um, especially since you went to the rear seat entertainment system. How many of you have Blu-ray at home? Um, if you and most of you probably know, if you have Blu-ray discs, they can't go into a regular DVD player, but your regular DVDs can go into the yes. Blu-ray. So we thought it was really critical at this point in time that we get uh, our rear seat entertainment system to be Blu-ray capable so we're really happy with that and the other cool part is I, I wish we had pictures to show you but the remote control everybody loses the remote in the right. vehicle right now we've developed right in the overhead console when you bring the screen down we've got a uh, recessed stowage compartment so you can just right. put it up there and you'll always have it always have it um, and the headphones headphones are another problem right in the second row we've got these beautiful map pockets now and they'll fit right down there so you don't have to put them in the map pocket in back of the front seats so that's another okay. good one but let me show you another one or two and then you can jump back. Um, passive entry, passive start. What's that? It's We call it PEPS. Keyless. So you can have the key fob in your pocket and you can just walk up to the vehicle, grab the door handle and walk on in. And then it's a push button start. Foot on the brake, then you push the button. Right. So you can leave your key fob, key in your purse, in your pocket, whatever. So that's another nice feature. Right. And when you leave the vehicle? When you leave the vehicle, you can program it to just lock the doors when you leave. So that, that is a really nice feature. Okay. But I want to I go back to one more thing. Hold on, because <laughs> I, I told, told you there's, there's a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of features <laughs> in here. There are. When we were talking about the safety, you'll love this one. Um, so we, today we have side blind zone alert in the vehicle. But what we've done with those same sensors, and this is where our engineers are just, they're, they're brilliant guys. We're able to use these same sensors and give it two new features that are really you're going to love them because one is cross traffic alert. So when you're at the mall or you're at the you're you're at the store or whatever, and you're parked in the lot and they're all lined up together, you're backing out your Yukon or your Yukon XL. They're kind of big, and it's hard to see all the way down the lanes. This one, the sensors look down the lanes, and it'll go 70 feet down that aisle. And if something's coming, it'll give you a, a visual and audible alert in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So that is really cool. And then the other one is what we're calling a lane change alert. And that's when you're driving down the highway and somebody is behind you and they're moving way past the speed limit. Right. You will get a visual alert in your side mirrors like you would on the side blind zone to let you know, hey, somebody's coming up really fast. Just stay in your lane right. if you want to turn. So there's another bunch of yeah. great features. All new 2015 Yukons. Yeah. All right, so moving forward, uh, we have a question that just came in from a Tammy P, and Tammy would like to know if the two-tone leather interior will be an option. Um, go ahead, Debbie. Go ahead. Well, yeah, Tammy, I'm not quite sure what, uh, what your vision of two-tone is, but when you look at the, um, the different interiors, we do have um, a mix of colors for the interior. Um, so for a seat specifically, if you just look at the seat, will the seat be two-tone? No. But... Will the IP and the doors and the seats have different complementing colors? Absolutely. And we'll have that on the Yukons as well as the Denali's. And that, that's just part of the, the whole right. interior 
um, design and where we're going with that, um, which if you've seen the pictures online, the interior is a beautifully designed interior. Yes, yes. And everything is ergonomically placed right at your fingertips. Right. And if you broke it down by models, Tammy, um, when you look at our SLE and SLT models, we will have one uh, two-tone interior that we call Coco Dune. So uh, as they were saying, mm -hmm. your IP upper would be one color, then your seats and everything, lower doors and below would be a different color. And then on Denali, we have two different interior colors, one called Coco Shell and another one called Coco Dark Atmosphere that also are uh, two-tone alternatives. And of course, we have a, a black interior acro across the entire lineup. So um, there, there's an interior, I think, that will meet everybody's needs. Um, next question. Um, also from Tammy, and she would uh, like us to uh, kind of delve a little bit deeper into magnetic ride control and how that uh, works. So I'm definitely going to let David know right. this. Hi, Tammy. Um, these, are, these are great questions. So the Denali will have standard magnetic ride control, okay? Uh, we're, we're not putting it on the uh, SLE or SLT models. Um, so Denali only. And l let me just... Um, overwhelm you just a little bit with how the system works then. Uh, I believe that's where we wanted yes. to go. So on magnetic ride control, what's really interesting about this is you have this magnetorheological fluid in the shock. And um, so this, this fluid actually has little metal iron particles in it. And around the shock absorber, you actually have, co it's, it's actually in the piston, in the piston head. You've got coils in the piston head. And when you change the current, changes the potential field, changes the magnetic field, all the particles in the fluid line up. And so it acts like, in essence, it feels like you're going from maybe pumping water through your shock to pumping molasses. So you change, in essence, the viscosity of what that is. And the beautiful part about that is it almost works instantaneously. So this, this whole suspension right. system, it, uh, it reads the road every millisecond, so that's every one thousandth of a second, mm -hmm. it's reading the road and it's adjusting in about five milliseconds. So in three or four inches, right. you've already adjusted it when, you, when you're going 60 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So it, it's an amazingly fast system and it, um, it it's a great ride. Yes, it is. It is a great ride. Okay. Um, last question here, uh, Mike I, he wants to know when the uh, Yukons will be launched in the U.S. Mm -hmm. We're also getting a lot of questions um, about pricing and when that will be made available. Uh, the answer to both of those is both announcements, well, will production will begin early in uh, quarter one and pricing will c coincide with when the uh, start of production actually occurs. So we don't have any pricing information to give you guys today, but uh, you know, if you go out to our website, um, you know, identify yourself as someone that is interested in the product or as a hand raiser, uh, we will definitely be able to get you uh, communications to let you know when all of these things will be taking place. And also as we put new content on our GMC.com website, if you identify yourself as a person that's interested in the product, we'll send communications to you. So as we put new images up there, there, new videos, uh, new facts about the product, you can go to gmc.com and uh, understand, get a greater understanding of what the product is about. Okay, um, that's all the time that we have for today. We want to thank all you guys for tuning in and for all the great questions. And we want to make sure that you tune in to our next Hangout session where we're going to be answering questions about the 2015 Sierra Heavy Duties on November 26th at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, the uh, guest that day is going to be the Executive Chief Engineer for Pickups and Full-Size SUVs, Mr. Jeff Luke. So thank you guys for uh, calling in, and um, we look forward to uh, everybody seeing the new product when it's available early Q1 of 2014. All right. Thanks for chatting.